How would you define globalization? What do you think it means or entails? Um, kind of globalization is, I guess, kind of the expansion of the free, mar free market and everyone being able to trade with each other. Standardizing of specific things that like one one country would see is right, like like as far as you know, fast food. To globalize that, would, to me, to be like to take that and spread it everywhere else and keep it the same way. Like pressuring others to be like one part, like one, like westernize, what, like to westernize everywhere else, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, when I think of globalization, I can't help but just think of American globalization because that seems, you know, that's how the world works now. It's like everything, like America is so embedded in every country. I mean, it's just like, Americanization is just taking over so many countries where the point that people are forgetting like who they are and what makes them special all around the world. I think it's about culture. I think it's about cultures and coming together about something. <laughs> Globalization is the worldwide sharing of goods, ideas, and culture through increased communication and advanced technology. In the era of globalization, the United States has become the leading exporter of culture. The United States is famous. American food, art, entertainment, language, religion, politics, and particularly American economics have saturated the globe. American capitalism has become such a vehicle for globalization, it is often considered a defining aspect of globalization itself. American capitalism manifests itself in thousands of familiar forms and brands. American businesses have become international enterprises, owned and operated by individuals all around the world. Nowhere is the exportation of American business and culture more apparent than in the fast food industry. And the leader of all fast food, the most widely recognized restaurant chain on the planet is ba -da -ba -ba -ba. McDonald's. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. George W. Bush? No, nope, that's a good guess, though. <laughs> Who's that? McDonald's. Ronald McDonald's. Who is it? McDonald's. <laughs> What does he do? He was helping people at the castle and just stuff. He works at McDonald's. I love the pancakes and sausage. He brings every of his friends to McDonald's for a happy meal. Where have you seen him? On television, on the commercials. He's the character that made McDonald's. And he does a lot of funny stuff on TV. McDonald's is the icon of globalization. Many American children are able to recognize Ronald McDonald before they recognize Jesus. Around the world, McDonald's has become a household name and part of an average diet. Today, the chain includes 31,000 restaurants worldwide and serves over 58 million people daily. This is almost equal to the entire population of Italy. McDonald's employs over 1.5 million people and is located in 118 countries. In many cases, McDonald's attempts to conform to local culture rather than change it completely. In Germany, one can order a beer with their burger. In Japan, a teriyaki burger with wasabi dipping sauce is offered. A chicken mac is offered in Hindu regions, and a McLobster roll is available in Canada. Despite McDonald's success and popularity, it is often met with negative criticism, both at home and abroad. How often do you eat at McDonald's? Never. Never mind. Not very often. Maybe once a week, maybe. Um, probably only every couple of weeks. How healthy would you rate McDonald's on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being very unhealthy and 10 being very healthy. 1. Um, if you're trying to gain weight, then I would say McDonald's is healthy. <laughs> Depending on what you get, but I'd say maybe a 2 or 3. What do you think of when you see a McDonald's or hear the name? Um, a lot of sun cakes. <laughs> yeah. Mentions that terrible clown. <laughs> he comes to my mind and it's so awkward. <laughs>
Author Eric Schlosser states in his book, Fast Food Nation, that by eating like Americans, people all over the world are beginning to look like Americans, at least in one respect. The United States has one of the highest obesity rates of any industrialized nation in the world. As people eat more meals outside the home, they consume more calories, less fiber, and more fat. The documentary Super Size Me, written and directed by Morgan Spurlock in 2004, was a graphic illustration of the negative effects of such unhealthy food. In fact, the film was so effective that shortly after the film was released, the supersized menu option was eliminated and the McDonald's premium salads were introduced to the menu. McDonald's has also been criticized for its environmental impact, its use of sweatshop labor to produce Happy Meal toys, targeting children with advertising, and its use of subliminal messages. So how is it that such a heavily criticized and often disliked business can be so successful? Why do you think McDonald's is a successful company? <laughs> cheap, fast. Because they're quick, it's cheap, and it's easy. Just everything now is just on the move. Everybody's got somewhere to go, something to do. You don't really have time to sit down, spend 45 minutes, eat, you know, you gotta, you gotta go. Uh, they, they serve a lot of cheap food that tastes good, um, that, and people are willing, and they have a drive through and people are willing to ignore the fact that, uh, that it's not very good for them. Because it's marketing, you'll see billboards anywhere, it's on TV, stuff like that. Marketing. People see it and they're wanting it, so. A conflicting emotional dichotomy exists towards McDonald's. Consumers often like McDonald's and are disgusted by it at the same time. People enjoy McDonald's because it is fast, cheap, and easy, but dislike it because it is stripping away individuality and culture, it is unhealthy, it harms the environment, etc. The same dichotomy of emotion exists towards globalization itself. People dislike the impersonal nature of mass-produced goods, the homogenization of culture, the destruction of tradition, and the self-interest that drives free market capitalism. However, humans are self-interested, and precisely for this reason, we want things cheap and fast, and we want to attain them as easily as possible. Thomas Friedman calls this conflict the battle between the Lexus and the olive tree. It is a matter of short-term pleasure versus long-term cost, and in a global society driven by self-interest, the long-term cost is being ignored.